students so let's start the <clears throat> endology you know the endologists are the a body of people scholars who looked india with the through the lens of indian text culture heritage and they perceived that indian tradition culture is so ancient and so great we should not look down at indian culture indian society as a backward society a tribal society so there are many indologists kesi chattopadhyay v k sarkar g s ghure but since the uh, syllabus mention only about the g s ghure we will study only about the g s ghure g s ghure his full name was govind sadasya ghure he born and brought up in a brahmin family in maharashtra and his his family was quite orthodox so he got a kind of brahmanic socialization in his early days he will wake up early in the morning perform rituals pray uh, pay respect to the elders uh, uh, vegetarian family so primarily is formative school uh, in his uh, uh, starting time he he studied in a missionary school and in his school uh, from his school he went to college he developed considerable interest in the literature uh, he was very good at in english literature marathi <coughs> literature and most importantly he developed love towards sanskrit he was extremely good at literature so in english he excelled yeah, marathi was his mother tongue and obviously he excelled in sanskrit literature so looking at his interest in sanskrit he was advised by his teachers to pursue a honors course in sanskrit so he uh, did his graduation with sanskrit honors and uh, he got exposed to loads of sanskrit literature and he he topped in the exam then he went to the bombay university for masters degree sanskrit and uh, you can understand he 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 has so much exposure to the, uh, to the sanskrit lit- literature and he topped in the university also he was the topper at that time so from there a uh, professor in the bombay university thought that uh, saw that he is a very very bright student he advised him to go to the cambridge university for which he uh, he wrote an essay paper and he he was very brilliant in that paper so the uh, uh, professor advised his name to the cambridge university he went there and primarily he was the guide he got there in cambridge university was a professor of political science but he has no interest in political science so one day he is admitted to the professor that sir i have no interest in politics and political science i have interest in these things literature races history of races this kind of things so the professor told him that he should go to the uh, whr river a professor whr river was a diffusionist you know who is a diffusionist a diffusionist is one who who look into the how the races have been spread from one place to another place what impact they have brought due to this <coughs> diffusion of races so he went to the whr river and he was quite impressed quite impressed by his intellect so gs gure at that point studied how the caste system came into india the aryans 
the Aryans came from the European side and they uh, they were different people from the local people of India. They came here and uh, they diffused into the India and that's how the caste system uh, the caste system started. Uh, <clears throat> Susan gave rise to the Aryan culture mingling around with local culture local culture Sanskrit was their language Sanskrit was their language so you will see the influence of Sanskrit in all the North Indian part all the uh, languages that you will find in North India you will get a tinge of Sanskrit in them he completed his PhD and in 1919 he came back to India uh, you see that period of time that era and that year in 1919 it was the phase of India where you will find that nationalist movement was at its peak therefore every scholar across the discipline is driven by the spirit of nationalism every scholar philosopher political scientist historian uh, they were writing uh, in the spirit of nationalism so therefore in the writings of G.S. Gure also you will find the flavor of nationalism nationalism is present there so in 1919 he joined Bombay University as a junior lecturer and in 1921 he started the uh, department of sociology department of sociology in Bombay University so he was the uh, uh, first uh, person who started the sociology department in year 1921 and he trained all first generation sociologists M.N. Srinivasan, A.R. Desai all those were his students and he wrote around 60 books he guided 50 PhDs theses hundreds of journals he writes articles so he was the institution builder he was the institution builder of sociology department in India he promotes the discipline he encouraged the research and his students follows different ideologies to conduct research so he was the institution builder in India of sociology so this was the GS Gure for him so let's start Indology and what is Indological approach it is largely influenced by Oriental tradition Indologists make an attempt to understand Indian society by looking into values culture customs language art literature architecture folk tales legends and behavior behavioral patterns so taking these things into account uh, the indologist try to look into the uh, indian society okay so be careful if you look at the history of india India was a country where people used to speak in different languages not only their languages are different but also their racial characters are different their deities are different their uh, form of worship is different uh, their gods are different okay so you will find that food are, foods are different behavior different rule of marriage different but still how can the people of India primarily, you know, come together? And, and and mind you, it's very interesting to note that unlike Europe, we never had centralized administration. You see, in Europe, uh, there's one emperor. India never had emperors. India never had one emperor who is ruling over the entire country. There was different kingdoms, you know, Vijayanagar was there, Kosal was there, and different uh, empires were there, different kingdoms were there, different uh, kings were ruling the country. So different rulers, different food, different culture, different heritage, different language, different way of life. So what is this uh, that is holding the India together? We will go in the northeast, everything is different from the south India. Uh, in south India, everything is different from the north India. 
but india has always been together you see what a beautiful uh, uh, question arises here that like uh, in nowhere in world such unity in diversity is found hmm? there are multiple nation in mm, europe you will see the concept of nation state one language uh, one food one culture one dress that kind of uh, concept you will find in uh, europe uh, and west but in india you will find that different political states are there different cultural communities are there huh? they were hold together hmm? so what was that that was holding the india together there was never a centralized political state in india hmm? and unlike europe like you see in europe the uh, one king is trying to bring down another king trying to annex its uh, other king's territory trying to win over other king but in india you will find that no ruler wanted to annex the other they are happy in their own uh, in their own kingdom they are happy with their own uh, uh, territory yeah you see so therefore india is like a rainbow where different communities are living together different political states are living together and one is adding to the colors of the lamp, uh, rainbow so rainbow they come seven colors are there you know and color try to give the beauty to rainbow and do not uh, do not diminish other color or do not kill the other, other color you see so this is the beauty of india so what is this that is holding india together in such diversity such huge diversity such huge uh, chaos you must see uh, what is this that that is holding the india together it is the common cultural consciousness you see the common ethics the common values the common ideology that is holding india together yeah. different type of people different group of people different communities the people from different communities different cultures they come together on the basis of common value consensus so gs gure is primarily talking about india or making of india uniqueness the uniqueness of india on the basis of common value consensus what is value the values are a body of abstract standards that regulates our everyday behavior values are body of abstract standard that regulates our everyday behavior values discipline our life huh? the family values the religious values so these values are guiding to our life you go to family you have to uh, you understand these things that in your family there is a value system that you have to do these things and you cannot do some other things okay so that is the abstract abstract rule that is uh, guiding your everyday behavior okay so wherever you go you you whatever you do but you are you always have one fear that you will never uh, you uh, you have this fear that if you do something bad you will bring down the uh, stature of your family so what you are doing you are you are respecting the value system of your family okay so this value system is something that is holding the india together okay so how this common value is propagated in the society we inherited this common culture this common value through the agents of culture agents of culture what are they religion is an agent of culture you see you all know this that your religion guide you to do some things and the your religion guide you to do not do something okay so you can do something same time you are uh, you are uh, uh, being stopped you cannot do certain things okay so family is an agent of culture family will tell you that what you can do what you should not do 
what is good to do what is bad to do what will uh, what will uh, 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 make your respect go up in the society what will uh, take down your respect so family is an agent of culture rituals are agent of culture through these agent of culture we get this value we imbibe this value into ourselves and adhering to these values we regulate our everyday behavior once we interrelate ourselves with other on the basis of these values on the basis of these values we identify objects and attach meaning to them okay holding these values we identify objects like river ganga what we say the river ganga is our mother you say it ma ganga how do you know because you were not here uh, some thousand years ago when the river ganga was uh, seen as mother okay how you get this you get this values through your family through your society okay and carry carrying this value we identify the object we see that some trees are sacred huh? we should not be chopping the tree like people tree so therefore value gives us a body of knowledge ideas on basis of which we regulate our everyday behavior you see the values define our relationship with others okay values give us knowledge to identify objects and attach meaning to them values give us space values give us a space to evaluate our action and the action of others so values are evaluating values are rational values carrying some meaning values are evaluational okay when you commit a mistake then you will evaluate it yourself and others will evaluate it they will attach meaning that you have done something wrong okay so you will feel bad about it when you do some right things you will feel happy about it your respect will go up in the society okay so by driven by these values we manifest our behavior driven by these value we relate ourselves with others okay so you see uh, driven by these values we consider a temple or mosque or gurudwara as a sacred place so we we attach meaning that this place is sacred we we do some actions uh, that is suitable for this place uh, we should not do some action that is not suitable to this place okay you see so through this concept gs gurey is primarily try, trying to explain it that how the people of india are coming together so he is using a concept known as triad t r i a d triad this is the centrality to his understanding of india and what is triad you know what is mono mono means one di means two and what is triad triad tri means three you, you say something that is symbolizing three identities that will be said as triad so his concept of three is carrying great significance to the people of india the culture of hinduism to hindu culture that is mainly the uh, culture of india so uh, three carry significance meaning it has a great value system in indian society centering around triad triad means what we have three gods in hindu society three great gods brahma vishnu mahesh okay you go to any remote village of the country of any part of country you will be finding out that even a small child knows that there are three great gods not only they know about these three uh, great gods they know what is their duties vishnu is in charge of maintenance brahma creates 
everything created uh, in this world is created by Lord Brahma. So, Brahma is the creator. So, everything that is created, it has to be destroyed at some point. But before that, the creation needs to be maintained. So, Vishnu is in charge of the uh, maintenance. Okay? But, after every creation has made to it end, its end, it has to be destroyed. From there comes the philosophy of birth and death. Okay? So, no creation is eternal. No creation is forever. Every creation has to go for uh, uh, its end. So, the Shiva, Mahesh, is the god of destruction. What is being created by Brahma and maintained by Vishnu will be destroyed by uh, Lord Mahesh or Lord Shiva. So, this is the concept of triad by which the uh, so, what is the next concept in triad? Everybody is born with three kind of attributes, three kind of qualities, three kind of behavior attributes. So, we are born with three different qualities that define our behavior. And what are these? Sattvic, Rajasic and Tamasic. First, Sattvic. Sattvic means what? Sattvic means good qualities. You know, Sattvic means Sat Chintan, Sat Katha. You know? uh, Sat Chintan, thinking pure, saying pure. Okay, so Sattvic means that you are always doing thinking something that is sacred, believing in something, doing something that is moral that is ethical you are doing you are speaking you are thinking pure so sacred so sacred and pure qualities are present in you so moral ethical behavior that is manifested by you then you carry sattvic qualities and what is rajasic qualities Rajasik means what? Rajasik means elite theory, you know, power, wealth. You are longing for power, wealth, hmm? elite status. So, mean by, you are driven by the qualities of Rajasik. You want to enjoy power, you want to expand your territory, bring more and more people into your country. So, the militant uh, uh, achievement, militant orientation, political expansion, control of power. If you are dri uh, driven by these qualities, then you have Rajasik qualities. So, next thing is Tamsik. What is Tamsik? It is enjoyment, enjoyment and only enjoyment. All kind of enjoyment material enjoyment, physical enjoyment, sexual enjoyment. So, you want every kind of bodily pleasure. So, therefore, everybody knows that Sattvic qualities are superior to Tamasic qualities. Tamasic quality means you only want to enjoy. Enjoy bodily pleasure, you want to enjoy food, you want to enjoy any kind of food, you want to enjoy any kind of power. So, Everybody appreciate someone who has sattvic qualities. Those who are carrying, affording sattvic qualities like monks, sannyasi, sadhus. They are living on simple food. They are living on pair of cloths, moving around in extreme climate. So we consider that these people are knowledge givers. These people. They are known for sacrifice, they are truthful, they, those people are grounded, so they are carrying sattvic qualities. Like Kabir, Mahatma Gandhi, Guru Nanak, they all are carrying what? Sattvic qualities. They are not selfish, 
they are driven by altruistic mindset you see so these are the sattvic qualities okay those who pursue the sattvic qualities those who have sattvic qualities they are given the highest degree of status in the society they command the more respect you must have seen at the time of the you know inauguration of the new parliament building that the pm modi was going down to those you know sanyasis those sant who, who brought the symbol so you know king always bow down to those people who have sattvic qualities okay so their status is always high raja the king always bow his head down before them because they are known for knowledge they are known for sacrifice kindness simplicity they are known for compassion so therefore in case of hindu indian society it is known to everybody that people who carry sattvic qualities had the highest status in the society so people carry three kind of qualities first is sattvic second is rajasic and third is tamasic and also in hindu indian society people discipline their life okay discipline their life or in other words i will be saying that they put their life in ashram vyavastha you know hindu life is a life of hermit it is a life of ashram vyavastha 